Major new drama comes to BBC Two on Monday evening. Now here's a taste of our four-part adaptation of Charles Dickens' epic, Our Mutual Friend. The story's a masterpiece. It's a great story. Is it a love story? Certainly not. It's more about money than anything. And does it say that money is better than anything? I really cannot tell you. Find out for yourself for all I care. The story of our mutual friend intertwines two very passionate love stories, which are played out against the portrait of London life, which ranges from a very greedy society right down to people who work on the dust mounds. Entire fortune to go to a dust man. But how will a dustman know what to do with such wealth? In the first of these love stories, a young girl called Bella Wilfer decides that her only way out of poverty is to marry money. I hate to be poor, and we are degradingly poor. I want money. I want it dreadfully. I think of the boffins as sort of 19th century pools winners, really, or lottery winners. I want to cheer your daughter and give her an opportunity to share such pleasures as we're going to take of ourselves. Bella is a realist. She just speaks the truth. She says what everybody thinks. Money makes life easier. <laughs> she is so <laughs> trivial. <laughs> so capricious, so mercenary. And yet, she is so beautiful. At first, John Rokes missed attentions towards Bella. They're not welcomed by her at all. Now, knowing every penny of my worth, you feel yourself bold enough to speculate on me. Eventually, there is a change of heart. How dare you come out of your station to pester this young lady with your impudent proposals? She starts to let herself succumb to her real, true feelings. I earnestly and truly beg your pardon. The only fault you should admit to is that you laid yourself open to be slighted by a worldly, shallow girl whose head was turned and was quite unable to rise to what you offered. The other love story concerns an upper-class barrister called Eugene Rayburn, who falls in love with an illiterate working-class woman. There is no better woman in London than Lizzie Hexham. Making a match is absolutely impossible. Absolutely opposite ends of the social spectrum. You must think of what you're doing. Lizzie, I never thought there was a woman in the world who could affect me so much. Crucially, he also has a rival. Sir, my name is Bradley Headstone. Your name does not concern me. And it actually comes to a head to head. I hope I may never kill him! Mr. Rayburn, he's nothing to you, I think. Oh, yes, he has. <sighs> he is much to me. What is to come of this, Eugene? You do feel for me in the way you've said this evening, then. There is nothing for us in this life but separation. Where's all this going? Heaven help you and heaven bless you. My dear Morton, I have the faintest idea. This is a classic story with contemporary relevance, populated by a cast of unforgettable characters and a plot that twists and turns like a snake. I said no good would come of settling so much money on a dustman. Old Boffin is rather corrupted by it. A good life. Or seemingly is so. How will he protect himself from the jackals now? Your health! Man's a mere novice in the ways of the world. We'll extract a hefty payment from Boffin. I guess you know what to say to your proposal, Mr. Wegg. Say yes. He's not a bad man, but he falls into bad ways. I wasn't so soured matters of romance. He's, um, lovelorn. But being soured and driven to reckless madness and desperation, I suppose it's yes.
From London boy to international superstar, BBC Two Now devotes an evening to the life and career of Citizen Kane. Favourite films, his movie acting masterclass and the odd Frank tribute all to come, introduced by Britain's nosiest neighbour.